Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, gentlemen. How are you guys doing today? Very good. Doing very well, thanks. Hey, Tony, what's new with you these days? Beg your pardon? What's new with you? Uh, well, November, I left the Diamondbacks and joined the Boston Red Sox, and they were playing like you know, the 27 Yankees, so it's been fun watching them. And, and you're an executive in Boston, is that right? Yeah, I've got some title like vice president, assistant to the uh, president, general manager, but Dave, Dave Dombrowski and I go way back. And uh, I just watch games and, you know, give an opinion or make a comment. Do you miss being on the field? Uh, a little bit. Uh, I like being involved in the game. The thing about being upstairs is you're helpless. Once the game starts, you can't do anything. <laughs> At least down in the field, you feel like you can make a decision. But I don't miss it enough to want to go back. It seems like, you no, know unlike any other sport, though, baseball players would rather still be associated with the game than not. You even see big names be going back to be a first base coach or something like that. I don't see that happening in other sports. Why do you think baseball has that draw? It's a great question, and I, I think there's a uniqueness. There's so much history, and one of the things you learn when you come into, into baseball is that it's all about the greater good. Uh, you do your best, but you understand that you've got to promote the game of baseball, and once you get at the end of your career, one of the things you can, pro you can contribute back is what you've learned over your years, whether it's the coaching or your own experiences, and the way you share that is to stay around and help. Well, that's a great way to look at it. I just always love that baseball players always find a way to stay in the game. I think that's why they do it. Now, you've been known for being a vegetarian and supporting animal charities. How did you become passionate about animal charities? My wife and I, Elaine, uh, and our daughters, we've been really passionate about companion animals. Once you find out how many are being euthanized over the years, you got to do something in a local nonprofit complements the public efforts and we started our 27 years ago and we had no idea it was going to be uh, would grow so much and one of the things we, we did not just us rescue the animals we have programs where the animals rescue people and that's what this morning is all about uh, six years ago we started putting uh, all the dogs that come into our, our program are rescued from the 24, uh, 24 hour later they would be uh, euthanized uh, so we, uh, we thought we could, mat we could match a dog that was just rescued with a veteran that would, could use a companionship. And, uh, and six years ago now, we've had 600 matches. But very importantly, we've also realized there's, there's more to that program. You can have a trainer like Danny who can create a service dog for one of our rescues. And we've got 100 in training right now. Danny, can you please tell me your story? Uh, my story? Uh, yes, I am an Army veteran myself. Uh, I got into training dogs because I trained my dog to be my service dog. At the time, there was no one to help me, so when I learned about this program and how they were going to be helping other veterans, I had to be a part of it. Now, why is it important for people to have good relationships with animals? Why is it important for people to have good relationships with animals? Uh, I think I think it's just a part of our humanity to be uh, in tune with animals and have a good relationship. Uh, as uh, the species on top, we need to look out for the rest of them. Now, service animals have sort of gotten a bad rap in the last couple of years because of people taking advantage regarding, you know, uh, personal animals. So, uh, what, what makes your what makes your uh, Project well, for one, we actually go through and train the dogs to know at least three uh, behaviors that will help alleviate the, uh, the person's disability. Uh, the dogs are also tested by third party uh, members and canine good citizens, which is a standardized AKC test. And then we videotape our public access test to make sure that uh, we're hitting all the qualifications needed. Uh, these dogs are excellent helps to our veterans and are, are prescribed by, by doctors and clinically licensed social workers. Now, what does the training of these dogs entail? Mm -hmm. The training of these dogs entails uh, basic obedience, intermediate obedience, canine good citizens, uh, tricks, or uh, excuse me, service skills, and public access. 
Uh, <clears throat> The dogs can learn anything from alerting to panic attacks to waking uh, members up from uh, nightmares. Now, what is the Service Dog Salute campaign? The Surf Dog Salute campaign is uh, sponsored by Dog Chow. Dog Chow is, has created a video through BuzzFeed for us. Uh, you can go to dogchow.com slash service. And when you share that video that's on there, they'll donate a dollar towards this program, up to $500,000. Uh, it's, it's excellent. It's going to help us expand this program, help more dogs, help more veterans, both ends of the leash. Now, Tony, why did you help develop this program in the first place? Well, there's a lot of us uh, remember the ugly 60s where veterans were not respected, and it's 180 degrees different now. A lot of people are trying to do something to thank them for their service, and when they come back, you know, there's reorienting, there's employment, education, housing. And we felt the magic of a companion animal would help those veterans, especially the PTSD ones that uh, emotionally are in tough shape. So uh, we had an idea, and as I say, we're uh, with the dog chow uh, uh, assistance. Uh, we want to expand this program. We've been, we have like, as I mentioned, 600 dogs and 100 and getting in training now to be service dogs, but. We have plans to expand this around the country and uh, this $500,000 that uh, we hope that we can get Purina Dog Child to contribute goes a long way to making that happen. But it really is concern for the veterans and there are people that, as I said, employment, education, housing, reorientation, but a dog, uh, no medicine, no machines. It's just that unconditional love. How many pets do you have, Tony? It varies. Uh, my wife and I we, and our daughters, uh, we have our family pets, dogs and cats. But we also, ARF has a very strong foster program. Uh, you get uh, the rescues that come in here and you prepare them to be adopted by the public. So at any one time we may have some puppies or kittens. To, so, you know, we, right now we have a few more cats than we do dogs. <laughs> now, how can people find out more? How can people help out and find out more information about your program? Well, there's two ways, uh, specifically the service dog salute that Dog Chow is putting on between now and Veterans Day. You go to dogchow.com slash service for be more specific to what we're doing uh, besides the, this Dog Chow service dog salute. You go to arflife, arflife.org. Uh, and, and you'll see we've, we've got a bunch of people being rescued by animals, but right now, the feedback that we've gotten, you know, work that Danny's doing with these veterans, uh, it, it stirs you emotionally. Uh, and this video that you'll see, uh, you have Mike and his dog. Uh, he's very, very articulate about what this dog has done to get him back into society, including dogs. They take their dogs now to baseball games and they never thought they would have that kind of social experience and enjoy it without being concerned. Now, what's next for both of you? What's next? Try yep. and get this thing going around the world, man. Helping as many veterans as we can here in the U.S. You know, one of the things Animal. is that uh, the life of the nonprofit is you have more ideas than you have funds. So <laughs> when you have something like our Pets and Vets program that has really exploded as far as uh, legitimacy, and we have a waiting list of veterans that want to join the program it's about raising money and that's why we're so pleased that uh, dog, dog chow has come up uh, you can watch the video or they also have specially marked bags that you can buy at the store and we get a portion of those proceeds so for us we've got grandiose plans and uh, it comes down to how much money we can earn to uh, to get those plans uh, implemented well I hope I hope you exceed your goal we we'll get the word now, out about Tony, that video. <laughs> I will make sure that we get out there. Uh, one more question for you. Do you have any predictions of what's going to happen this season with baseball? Well, there's, there's a good news, bad news. The bad news is there are a few teams that are really going great and other teams that are struggling and rebuilding. But the ones that are going great, like right now in the American League East, <clears throat> when you have the Yankee-Red Sox rivalry, it's always intense. And when both teams are really good, it just ratchets up the, uh, the pressure. Like we just played in New York the other, a couple weekends ago and it was a postseason atmosphere. 
and you have other teams, as I mentioned, there's a handful of teams that are really good. So the baseball, when it's played right, is really good, and the teams that are struggling have got plans to, you know, to retool and get better soon. So uh, it's going to be a, a very pressurized last two months. Tony, how do you like people to connect with you? Through social media, or is there a way that you like people to get in touch with you? Well, you know, this uh, ARF has been a, uh, a private kind of uh, crusade for the LaRusa family. I mentioned Elaine, our daughters Bianca and Devin. So you can reach us through arflife.org. We respond to everyone. Uh, it's been our, our uh, family thing that we do outside our professional life. My, mine is baseball. Uh, so, you know, we learned a very important lesson through the, the ownerships that we've had over the years, and that is to give back to the community. Give, you know, whatever you do, find a way to give back to something that's your passion. Our passion is mm -hmm. companion animals and what they can do for people. And this veterans program is, as I say, it's a... Uh, when you see the testimonial, you listen to the testimonials, uh, it stirs you emotionally, you get, you get tears in your eyes, and you want to do more. Well, thank you guys both. I wish you all the success in the world. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate thank your you. help.